Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Thursday Nighter. Oh hi, how's it going? It's Tom and it's Hayden. And we've got a special guest this week, another special guest. We're keeping <laughs> them coming, aren't we? We've made a substitution. Cotney Corner has been replaced by... Uh, the Dudley Corner. The Dudley <laughs> Corner. That sounds like the Dudley Brothers or Full, something. Uh, full of Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Introduce yourself, mister. Well, my name is Tom. And uh, that's about it, really. <laughs> we found him outside. Yeah, I was just kind of milling around, and I just thought I didn't have anything else to do. So we thought, thought yeah. do you like football? He said yes. Well, you're on, son. When you're on tonight. <laughs> yeah. Substitution. Um, Tom, just before we get started, uh, who do you support? Uh, what, uh, tell us a footballing story. Why, why are you interested in football? Earliest memory, maybe. Well, I've supported Man United for... It's one of those things where... You support a team for so long you don't mm. remember when you started mm. supporting them, you just always have. Yeah. I've probably started supporting them because they were successful, yeah. to, in, in all fairness. I've never heard that before, to be honest, mate. To be honest. I've never heard that, uh, <laughs> that story of supporting Man United. But. Um, I'm the worst kind of fan, really, because I've never been to a... I've been to football games, but I've never been to a Man United game. Yep. And uh, I've been roundly... Uh, insulted for that but we know how much of a football fan you actually are don't we yeah, you know, exactly. we, we well, know I mean I've had to put up with the strife of being a Man United yeah. fan recently you know I know it's been a it's been a bit more rocky hasn't it so to speak the last few few years even it's tested the steel of yeah. the supporters it mm. has indeed mm. um, can I just say for the sake of confusion let's not let's not do Tom right he can be Tom obviously because that's yeah. his name it's also Shank. my name Let's, let's, let's call me Shank I hate to be one of those people to enforce a nickname um, but I will get very confused he will anyway. shank I'm, you I'm a simple <laughs> I'm a simple mind I won't shank anyone that's, I thought, the, I thought that's you not sh- where I get the nickname from there's <laughs> also nothing to do with my golfing prowess either but, um, <laughs> I uh, thought you said Shaq <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he minds that nickname <laughs> like, cool, mate. we'll leave that for another podcast <laughs> yeah we'll leave that for um, from a, a late night edition perhaps yeah. <laughs> uncensored uncensored yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose we better get into some actual football. Yeah, that's what we're here for, isn't it? Yeah, so well, we had a bit of action game. last night, didn't we? In we the, did in the in the cup and uh, Liverpool and City final this year. Yeah, the, the League Cup will be the decided cup. by one of those two people. Um, two people, mm. teams. You know what I mean? Um, it's interesting. Mm. They've got the rub on them a little bit, Liverpool over City. In recent have, matches. Yeah. I think I've seen that they were in the last eighteen games. I think City may have only won four or something like mm. that. So. That, that, that stat may not be correct, but feel free. And obviously, to Sterling tell me if I'm going right. back, you know, against his former side on the big stage. He, Sterling hasn't actually been performing that well recently, has he? I think he started off well. Yeah, he, he started well. But, everybody um, thought he'd just go on the bench. Everybody mm. like the kind of Fabian Del thing, where everybody thought yeah, yeah. he'd be there just to make up the English quota yeah. because mm. they were always falling short. But he surprised everybody when he did start off mm. as well as he did because he gave the team what they'd always be lacking which was that kind of dynamic pace down the wing but I don't know just recently he, he seems to me like a bit of a Jesus Navas but mm. with some end product as essentially well, yeah you know, he's, he's... well what I noticed the other day was when Man City played West Ham and it was 2 all. um they played what forty million for Sterling, fifty million, I don't know, some, something like some that. Amount, and, yeah. and West Ham paid ten million for Dimitri Payet, yeah. and he played everyone off the park that night. Yeah, well, let's and not get these dollars. Like you know, oh, we know, you know we, my, we, open love 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 my, my open uh, love letter. <laughs> this is every week to Dimitri. If, yeah, if you, like I'd just love to watch him play football. I mean, he'd be worth the entrance yeah. fee alone. I think. He's yeah. Like, so obviously Fantastic. there was a result last night. Uh, City walked away three-one winners, didn't they? Yeah. And there was a bit of a controversial decision, wasn't there? Well, it, I don't think it was particularly controversial. The ball was clearly out. Um, Straight in there. Well, I, you know, I, I, I just think it, it, you expect a little bit. Oh, don't get me wrong. On the night, City were a better team, especially second half. They battered yeah, Everton yeah. really. Um, and I don't think it was. This has anything to do particularly with. Everton's defending. I thought some of Martinez's decisions were strange. I don't know why he took Delafeo off. I thought he was on a great game. Mm. Um, but still, I, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think this is to do with the Everton's defending. And no, no, no. I, I think had you know had the ball gone out. Well, it did go out. But had the referee called that, you know. Okay. City did have the momentum. They may still have gone on to win the game. Three it's ones. always one of those decisions, isn't it? A bit like the Germany England game. You know, yeah. could it have? Uh, would it have changed the game? Blah blah. It's always coulds and woulds. And yeah, if, you look at it, it, if you look at it cynically, you probably find that Martez is try using that as a way of shifting blame off of the fact that Everton weren't 
And they they just they probably wouldn't like you said they weren't going to win. They weren't going to win the game. No, I think he's probably just shifting blame away from his yeah. players like managers do, licking his wounds a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Well, they would have been gutted to not have the Merseyside final. Wouldn't I know, they? That would have been, been a great been, game, wouldn't it? Great for the fans, wouldn't it? You know, it would have been a you know a red blue final would have been would have been would awesome. have made it a lot more glamorous, wouldn't it? Yeah, I certainly yeah. would. I mean, it's still a big game. It's oh still... yeah, definitely. A bit predictable though, isn't it? You know, but um, yeah, well maybe I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't like to try and predict the, the, mm. the outcome. Of the final, I don't think. Not with Liverpool. Liverpool have got this this edge on City at the moment. Mm. You know, despite the fact that they're not necessarily, you know, performing as they would like to be in terms of league success. But you know, so, sort of always get the sort of vibe that Klopp is there for the big days as well. He's there yeah. for the big occasions. You know, the colour of him to sort of. Imagine him running down the Wembley touchline, <laughs> and yeah, he'll never walk. He does like a good sprint down the yeah, sideline, he does, doesn't, doesn't he? Does like a good sprint. Yeah, he does. Well, they, uh, I, f- I, f- I was reading it earlier. I, f- I do forget now which player said it, but they said uh, in the, um, I forget which game it was, but uh, it was it when they, when it was level. I think right. Klopp's half time talk yeah. really completely turned the dynamic Changed of the how they were going to perform mm. around. And I think he's that kind of manager. Where obviously he's tactically astute, but yeah, yeah. he has harnessed that kind of char- uh, charisma mm. that you absolutely need. Well, he's, he's sort of, he's a man, I mean, we've said it before about managers that you believe in, you know, they, there's got to be a footballing tactical edge, like you said, yeah, but there's got to be that sort of, we want to play for the manager because he's got exactly. this confidence in us or, or something like that, some sort of charisma that really gets everyone going, you know. You don't and want to let him down. That's, that's it, that's yeah, yeah. Essentially it feels like it one of the players, doesn't exactly. it? It feels like, you know, when you... Well, well, I think... If you look at the Norwich game the other day, when, oh. they, when they scored the winner, was, what, was it 5-4 in the end? Or whatever? Ridiculous, yeah. Um, when they scored the winner at the end, he, you know, he was, came reaching down, and he was beckoning in the motor, wasn't he? You know, come, 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 you know, sort of thing. And then he's, you know, <laughs> jumping around with each other. Dropped and, the one bomb on his glasses. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, it's very hard to find glasses without glasses, as the cop said. Um, but yeah, you know, he's obviously got a rapport with his players, and, and mm. to have done that in such a short space of time obviously shows he's respectable kind of isn't it is. I think they're always going to sort of accept him because he is, he is that sort of guy isn't he's he he's a glamour manager isn't he yeah he's mm. a glamour name mm. alright we'll leave that then that's decided Everton you're going home sorry um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a bit of footage that emerged on social media in the last probably the last week yeah, few yeah, days last um, week, we're not actually sure when the footage was filmed um, but it shows uh, Chelsea fans on an away day we believe it's a, it's a European, time, European so. trip and um, do you want to take us through it you've well, seen it a few times it's pretty ugly to watch if you haven't seen yeah. it um, you know I'm not I, I would just say if you put Chelsea fans into YouTube it'll be the first yeah, result yeah, that comes it up it will be um First and foremost, I just want to say with a heads up that obviously all fans misbehave at times, and mm. you know this is in no way an indictment of all Chelsea fans because you know not all Chelsea fans are like that. Not all Chelsea, Chelsea fans are like that. You know, no, exactly. Um, basically, they they smashed up a calf. You know, all their out, outside furniture has been mm. pretty much demolished. The owners come out and is is trying to clear it up. You know, and move move the guys away. It, not in an not in an aggressive way. No, others. not in an aggressive he way. Anything, or he, he's it? obviously he's visibly distressed. I mm. think because you know it's his life. <laughs> business is being smashed up. <laughs> um, from his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll be livid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then it, it all gets a bit fractious at, at, mm. the, at the end, and the owner ends up getting punched. In the face. In the face, and as we were discussing, he before, took that like Roy Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, 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 <laughs> champ. He took it like a champ, and he didn't flinch, mm. which I thought was pretty impressive. But um, he, he, he got he got pushed before. Did you yeah, see he, he got, got pushed into got pushed the table first. Into the table. There's so glass so, everywhere. There's just no need for that. It's, 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 clear up his business, it's quite yeah. gritty to watch, isn't it? It is. It? And, it is uh, as a as a football fan, it's quite. You know, it's yeah, this pack mentality that comes into it. Mean, just, you just wonder whether those guys then went to work on Monday morning or whenever mm. it was, you know. Well, back to their kids. Back to their kids, you know. Mm. And they obviously wouldn't behave like that in, in any other walk of life. So, it, you know, well, you'd hope they wouldn't because otherwise mm. they'd be arrested and locked up. But uh, well, the, well, it's just say, painful sorry. viewing, yeah. They say, uh, it's like an old uh, phrase, they say sport is the modern substitute for war. Mm. And when you get... That amount of kind of, mm. as you said, like the kind of crowd mob, the mob mentality. mentality. Yeah. People just they're not themselves, yeah. and you're probably right. You got you got all those all those people destroying a man's livelihood, going yeah. home, probably just acting like normal. Putting people. the kettle on, exactly, and going to know. bed, exactly. It's crazy. It's, it really does make for quite nasty, 
nasty viewing. And, and like like Tom said, this isn't a, a personal attack on Chelsea. It's just something that we've seen, and it doesn't paint them in a good light with the Metro situation that was on no, yeah, exactly. really a couple had, of years ago had as well. They particularly good uh, um, press, have they, in the last couple of years. So. And I'm sure the club will be moving to sort of clean up their reputation well, they, again. They, they, because, they need a PR campaign, don't they, yeah. after this, I think. So. So we, we were saying, this is this is the sort of 70s stuff again, isn't it? I mean, yeah, this was exactly. all supposed to be sorted, you know. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it, it does make you, not even not just Chelsea, it kind mm. of makes you feel a bit embarrassed yeah, to, it's be, a bit of football a fan. football fan yeah. and an English football fan mm. because you're if it's if obviously it's overseas you're the representative yeah, of exactly. what it is to be an English, England football fan yeah. and it makes people think well because obviously the hooligan issues in the 80s mm. people we try try and try to make people forget about that mm. but then it just brings it right back and all that work is but lost it almost seems it, like it, it is it does, yeah. it's coming back you know the whole casual thing the stone eye yeah. it's really coming back isn't it it really is that Elise it, I, mean, I, I, I don't. I'm, it's not the same. Don't no, you know, I, I, I just I don't know why it needs to come back. No, though, as no why, you know, we've, there's been so much work done to try mm. and stamp out this really quite grim image of football. Mm. It, it's, it's so unnecessary, you know. It, it's with all, uh, all the rest of the nonsense that goes on in the world today in terms of violence and everything else. Do we really need football to be mm. rearing its ugly head as well? I don't think so. It's no. just it's a shame. Well, it's a shame because. At the end of the day, Chelsea are a team that, are, that generally do well as well. Not maybe yeah. not as much this season. They've got they've got stuff to sing about. They've got trophies to shout about. And this doesn't really need to happen, does it? You know, they're, they're not frustrated football fans. Well, up until this season, you know. So, and this wasn't filmed this season, or so we believe anyway. Yeah, by the judging by the kits, the it kits looks that like we see maybe, in the videos, maybe, you know, eighteen months to two mm. years, three years old, maybe. So, yeah. Do you think the police should get involved with this if they can find out a date of the? I absolutely, I personally absolutely think they should. Do you? Because it's well, it's criminal damage. Because the yeah. faces yeah, are all there. You, right? Yeah, if you can, you can identify these people as well, can't you? So mm, it yeah. just. Well, it's important to to if you haven't seen the video, there's probably at least fifty fans in this circle around this guy. It's not like two or three, is it? Oh no, it's at least. They've three, all got yeah, phones out least, as well, yeah. filming and. You know, it's 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 a quite a sour incident. It know. is, and like we said before, it is a painful watch. It's mm. not easy to look at. Mm. Um, but you know, but on the flip side of that, um, I know you, Hayden, have got some really good news. Yeah, with regards to football fans doing something positive. Yeah. Well, we didn't want to leave it on such a negative note because not all football fans are like that. Obviously, not all Chelsea fans are like that. But um, obviously, I do a lot of work with Birmingham City, and I write for one of our. Uh, fan sites and that sort of thing and um there was a really nice story this week that that we that we got together and, and put out into the press and there's a lovely lady called carol that's been going down the blues for 57 years on her own she's known as the scarf lady she has 49 scarves <laughs> hung all over her to keep her warm bless Great. her and uh she enjoyed a really nice um trip to saint andrews last week or the week before courtesy of a couple of the blues groups and the sponsors that organised all that like a nice VIP day and then she went on a talk show and there was a bit more awareness spread of who she is and that sort of thing and then one of her friends on social media actually suggested that people try and raise a bit of money for her and um, after that there's been enough money raised for a commemorative brick to be installed at St Andrews with her name and title awesome. and nearly £290 towards her season ticket for next year that's outstanding. So football that's fans really have rallied together to do that. And, and most of these people haven't even met her, you know. I think it's important you hear stories like that. It really that. is, it isn't really it? It really is. But especially after what we've just been discussing. Yeah. I think it's nice just to know that, come on, humanity does. Yeah. <laughs> will does, prevail. Yeah, humanity <laughs> will prevail. Yeah, like you took the words away, mate. 57 years she's been going from Nichols, which is a part of Birmingham, on her own. She's sat in the same place most of her career. Well, her, her sporting <laughs> career. Uh, <laughs> the career. Um, Wouldn't it be great if, if you actually did get paid? She's got her own yeah, it was a profession. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, we spoke to Tracy the other day. It was one of her friends who sat with her in the family stand for five years, and um, she she was she was really happy, and it was really nice to see. It was it was really lovely because. Uh, it does like like anything, not just football, but there is good in the world, isn't there? With, yeah, all, yeah, with nice, everything that's nice going on, it's nice to hear it and see it from time to time as well. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of negativity out there, isn't there? So it's nice that it's nice that we actually focus on the good stories mm. as well. Because there are good people out there. There are good people. So we'll leave that one for a minute, and we shall go on to something that you actually wrote earlier. From yeah, me to you, me well, to you, me yeah, to well, you. I wrote a, a blog <laughs> post earlier on, um, just on the basis of something I'd, I'd read in a few of the few different newspapers actually um and i was it really made me quite cross <laughs> um, 
prepare yourselves. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to get on my high horse and you know might have to be it might have to be taken off. Um, basically, there's a bit of bullying going on, perhaps at the top from those who decide TV deals and you know mm. and, and what goes on at the height of European football. So the Champions League is obviously in this country. You finish in the top four. That's your place sorted, unless, of course, somebody out from outside the top four wins it and then... Sneak in. You know, they sneak in. We've had that in the past, haven't we, I believe, with Mm -hmm. Liverpool and Chelsea. Um, Both times, I think, might have been to Spurs' detriment. Um, But irrespective of that, there's a lot of chat about some of the bigger clubs and the TV, the people who are sorting out the TV deals conspiring to try and get (laughs) automatic places... Uh, dished out for the so-called bigger clubs, so your Arsenal's, your Man United, your Chelsea's, your Liverpool's, would, 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 would lovely, be, would be lovely given, jubbly. would be given a Champions League spot um, in this premise. Now, obviously, it, nothing's been agreed or sorted out, and the idea is that it would be thrown out into the 2018 competition, I believe, from what I've read. It's not that far away. No, so no, exactly. It's only it's only just round the corner. Um, if it is agreed, which I, you know, there's probably some legality into why it won't be. Um, but just on the basis of sport itself, it just completely removes the whole idea of competition, doesn't yeah, it? You know, yeah. it's just, just very anti-competitive, and surely that's what sport's all about. Yeah. It eliminates the the uh, the process of of, um, of improvement, doesn't it? Yeah, because exactly, the reason exactly. you get better yeah. is to get into the Champions yeah. League. If that's eliminated, it's like how Arsenal. Not so much this season, but in the past few seasons, have always been like, well, mm. fourth is a trophy, third is a trophy. Mm. They're in their little. A comfortable yeah. setting where they don't they know they don't have to break through that wall mm-hmm. and if no. you introduce this that's 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 for four or five teams yeah. and now they don't have to improve well, it's like giving like it's like getting your dog to learn a trick and giving it a vegan cheese sandwich after there you go <laughs> <laughs> have that enjoy that but just think if you're yeah. Leicester City yes like Leicester's you, a great you, example you know, really imagine hurts. if there's a Leicester mm. City in 2018 it might be Leicester City but they don't have the TV broadcast ability then, maybe. You know, it's probably not a word. I've just made it up. But they don't... <laughs> it's a word now. <laughs> yeah. They, they, don't, they don't have the legions of people who, when they're not at the stadium... Yeah. Around the world. Well, around the world mm. will just watch it on TV. Mm. They can't compete with Man United. Yeah. They can't compete with Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool. They can't, you know, these... And it's not... It's completely unfair mm. to try a, a, and remove a situation whereby... <laughs> You know, you finish in the top four, and you, oh, sorry, you nothing. sorry, you don't get anything for that. I'm afraid, apart from maybe you know, you get your Premier League money, which would be great. But how Everyone does that help that. you? How does that help you? you know? Ultimately, it boils down to you think, well, if that's going to happen, then what's the point? Yeah, you know, it's like going to a game, but then, then the, 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 like the scores are then told to you as you sit down. Yeah, you exactly. Watch it then. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like that. You think, well, we're, we're trying so much. That's the beauty of football. Yeah. Leicester this season is a perfect example. That's why we love football. Yeah, exactly. exactly. We love these stories. Don't we, we love the, sto- the the fairy tales and the underdogs, and it would completely remove all that. I'd love to see Leicester in the Champions League. It'd be great. It'd be fantastic for them. You know, we can deliberate awesome. all all we like at how well they'd do, but everyone's been saying this season, God, it's going to come to an end at some point. But, but what's interesting you know? about Leicester, and I know we're like going off on a tangent a little bit, is I've heard so many pundits, experts, journalists come out with the Oh, you know, United fans need to get over the Alex Ferguson style of play. That that yeah. doesn't win you trophies anymore. It doesn't get you there. But it is, Leicester are three points clear at the mm. top of the league, and that is the exact brand of football yeah. that they're playing. You know, so I find it difficult to believe that you know people should be so far removed from trying to play football that it wasn't that long ago won the league for me. You know, yeah. do you know what I mean? Well, that's the thing. I think that kind of cavalier attitude is it, it, you can't like Alex Ferguson sometimes used to play like two four four. And yeah. kind of just yeah. trying to outscore the other team, and mm. that works sometimes. But it's a lot more than that. Mm. Like Leicester this season, do have they do have? If you watch them play, they have a very strong core of players Their in spot the midfield. Amazing, it it really is, mm. and it's not just about them playing with this kind of dynamic attitude, which is there. But there's mm. a lot more behind that to show it up, and mm. that's why they're doing as well as they are. Yeah, it's that backbone that holds it all up, is it? Their, their midfield, if you look at Kante and Drunk Water, I think they've been absolutely revolutionary. Oh, that Kante year. was just an absolute powerhouse, isn't yeah, it? He's incredible to watch. Yeah. They've brought in another player, haven't they? He's, um, from FC Copenhagen. Have they? Big lad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember hearing about that. Yeah. Do, you, do you think, in all kind of honesty, they can win the league? <sighs> oh, controversial. Because um, your heart wants it to happen. Yeah, that's, really it's think. one of those. Um, I'd love them to be up there. I really would, and 
it makes it interesting that these underdog story. And why not? I don't see any reason why not. They need to get lucky with injuries. That that is the one I, I thing. Think, I think they can afford to have two or three players yep. maybe missing. Anything more than that, they'll struggle. If yeah. they had like Arsenal type, yeah, injuries, they wouldn't. They would you know, fall away. Well, it's been nice to see Okazaki and Oyoa come in and do well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Take the pressure off Vardy a little bit. Um, obviously, Damari Gray's come in as well. He's not a, a f- finished product yet. Who's, but who's, who's the Swiss guy in midfield? He's always done well when he's coming as well. Inla. Inla, yeah. yeah. Well, he's got Champions League experience exactly. with Napoli, hasn't exactly. he? He's been all over the, yeah. all over the gaff. <laughs> um, but yeah, Leicester, it'd be, be lovely. And if this TV deal... Well, um, it would just kill sides like Leicester, wouldn't it? You yeah. know? And I, I, I couldn't have been more irritated by what I was reading, mm. you know, both last night and this morning when mm. I was reading these stories. I was just like, what? It's just unfair. That's yeah. what it boils down to. It's just not fair. Well, obviously you've got the TV money and the Champions League stuff. Do, is, is money in football genuinely ruining the game anyway? Is, is, are people outpriced? I know it's a massive issue. I think if you ask the, Does it the dictate average the game? Fans, they'll say yes, won't mm. they? Yeah, mm. I, yeah I, th- I, think, I think it has. I mean, I think in certain aspects it's made it more like kind of like aesthetically appealing yeah. to watch because there's more money in it, which means there can be more. It's well packaged, isn't it? It is. There, there can more be more money activity to kind of things like uh, like grassroots projects, like uh, having the having the kind of coaches. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. The development of coaches, mm. the development mm. of players, which yeah. does need more money, really. And in that aspect, I think it's made the game as you watch it better. Mm. But I think yeah. the magic behind it is has been disappeared ruined. a bit. The soul of the game has been ripped out a little bit. That's isn't exactly it? what it is. We're selling our soul to the devil, literally. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. it, to use a, so a very rich devil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been, you know, so you want of a better phrase. But the other thing is, I think it, it's driven. It, there's massively inflated the price mm. of, of very average players are getting bought for 25, 30 million now, aren't they? I think. Well, you look at like, and I mean very average in the <laughs> state of professional football, <laughs> not not as in compared to me, <laughs> it would be much worse than very average. Um, but yeah, well, you look at players now, like say, was it like Real Ferdinand, for example, when he went to Man mm. United? That was from Leeds. From Leeds, that was like thirty. Like just north of thirty million. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was a huge amount of money. Right? That's mm. not that much now, no, really. No. Well, you know, it should be. It but, really should but, be, but it mm. isn't. And it, and that's nothing to do with standard inflation, is it? That's to no. do with football inflation and the money that's been pumped into it. Isn't it? Even in just the last few years, the inflation <sighs> in football in terms has yeah. skyrocketed massively. Yeah. Well, I think if you're looking at sides like Norwich and uh, Bournemouth, who've invested quite heavily in January, yeah, yeah. the money that they're spending. The sides that came up from the championship, not the all, like you know, maybe five years ago, probably less than that. Mm. There's no way they could invest that kind no, of no, money in, in, in a no. jamming transfer. That's why they always struggled. Mm. So, in a sense, you could say the money is actually helping the promoted teams because yeah, but if those those. Those signings have to pay off, don't they? they yeah, of course. Yeah, and in yeah, January, yeah. they are always a risk. You're taking the yeah, player from one squad and you're bringing them into yeah, yeah. They've got to assimilate. Mm. They've got to learn your style of play, your philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> it's always, when you see, kind of like, it always tends to be lower level teams that bring in the volume of players. Yeah, yeah. And it always does have that kind of air of desperation about it. Mm. In yeah, a manner of speaking, what like, the mass recruitment sort yeah, of thing? Yeah, it's not going yeah. well. Let's bring players in to make it go well. <laughs> Barry Fry, and, and then, <laughs> how, and then how does that? How does that then? If, you know, has a knock-on effect on academies mm. and stuff, doesn't it? So yeah. it's, exactly, it's like look at the Chelsea academy. Yeah. You know, they're, they're producing it, fantastic players yeah. who can't get a game. Like, yeah. Forget the glass ceiling; it's like a platinum ceiling <laughs> that yeah. they can't get through, and it's ridiculous. Well, it's like lead, isn't it? Can't. Um, yeah. Nuclear penetration. Yeah, there is nothing near it. It'll give you lead poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> There's some great players coming out of the Chelsea Academy, isn't there? It really is. Like Bamford, Loftus Cheek, Callas as well. Who's on loan? I think what I heard though. Um, I was um, I was looking on the Bleacher Report. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I was looking on there last night. There was a video on there. You know uh, that Chelsea actually might get a transfer ban. Because of, um, I think, the, the misuse of Bertrand Traore when he was 16. Oh, I think he played yeah, for the under-18s. How many oh, times did he play or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think he... He, he, he has to have played so many games, doesn't he, or something? God, exactly. They might get a transfer ban, which would be disastrous for yeah. them. Well, they, it wouldn't be the first sign either, would it? They, well, at least the academy players will be right, might That's have a chance here, might they? Think of, yeah. Obviously, they're going to have to have a manager set in stone then, aren't they, with a the yeah. project for the young players? Do you think that's a, a Chelsea as a club thing, or do you think... The managers they've had 
a famously if you look at Mourinho he doesn't look, he doesn't go to the youth team does he no you know I've, ne- I've never I've never known him even when he was at Porto you know they were established players I mean they were all from a lot of them were from you know they didn't necessarily buy yeah. them they were from Porto but he didn't necessarily bring no. them through did he, he he'll give you th- he's, the, he's the kind of manager that'll give you three years yeah, he'll that's... give you trophies and then move on he's kind yeah. of like a bit of a mercenary in that sense but <laughs> you do need you do need a long term plan that yeah. Chelsea haven't got like people talk about the idea of you know ripping up and starting again but they've got mm. nothing to rip up because yeah. they go from manager to manager that's well, why these players never come through look at Papi Dillabodji they bought him from a French club he's played 10 minutes against Warsaw in the cup they paid 5 million for him now he's gone on loan to Werder Bremen and they could have bought a youth player through for that well, exactly you know, yeah, exactly. 5 million for, it is, it is worrying, for a team that I support is massive it's a worrying massive trend money. isn't it yeah, yeah. It's, and that's the, the money isn't it yeah. exactly they bought that Michael Hector in, in, in yeah Summer as well from Reading, loaned him straight mm. back instead of bringing a youth team player through. Well, I think I read somewhere Chelsea have got over forty players on though in the yeah, it's ridiculous. It's something like, like that. And Christian Atsu's just moved on to Malaga again to that on loan, just <laughs> never ending. I think it's just because they don't know what to do with them. Yeah. Well, they got so many players on their. Is it yeah, unfair? Is it unfair on right. the players, on the youth players, and the youngsters? They're think... always on loan, but ultimately never going to get into the side. Well, Chelsea it's a bit fruitless, They've been isn't given it? first team football as well, won't they? Mm. You know, they're saying we can't give you a first team football at the moment, but we are giving you the platform to do that elsewhere. So. Is, is it the same though? Is, is being well, on loan? I suppose it depends where you're playing. Yeah. Isn't it? You know, if, you, if you're if you're playing at a third division, be careful who you insult. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know who's listening. You're playing for a third division like Swiss side or whatever. Yeah, it's not, yeah. 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 I, I think it's, it's not very good for your for your progress, is it? I think it depends on the type of loan it is. If you mm. say have a plan, you think right, we're going to loan you out for a couple of seasons, but hang in there because there is a long term goal yeah. if you perform. But they, it's not. Did they do that with the centre half of Kurt Zuma? Did they? Was it him that they did yeah, that with? Yeah, was, was it Saint Etienne or something like I that? I think so. Yeah. There's well, no they had that plan with Courtois, didn't they? And it worked really well. There's but no he was at a top, to- I, I, I think top team. With a lot, of, a lot of these players, though, if you look at like Kurt Zuma and Thibaut Courtois, they were always going to be good players, weren't they? They were yeah. probably always going to be good enough. You could see that when they were 18. Yeah, you? to come through and play, play for Chelsea. So it, mm. whether that's a, the risk that they paint it as, mm. I'm not entirely sure. Speaking of Chelsea, let's... Should we talk about R- Ramirez? Yeah. <laughs> Ramirez <laughs> has yesterday completed a £25 million transfer. Drum roll for the butchering of the pronunciation of this name. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Su Sunning FC. Well done. Well done. I think that's probably the best. It's not a flavour of crisp, by the way. <laughs> I, I, I think that's probably the best pronunciation we've had so far on a Thursday night out because we are pretty awful yeah. at these. Slaying the names. Yeah, at these names, yeah. And. and <laughs> We've got a pretty poor track record, so I think Hayden might be getting us back on track. Good Thank right. you. So Ramirez is 28 years old. Up until this season, he's been a first team starter. He's he's been well, he's done he's done well. Um, 25 million, 28 years old, gone to China. Thoughts, Tom? Su- surprising. It's yeah. a shock, mm-hmm. but I suppose in the modern game, it's also very depressingly, uh, you know. Yeah, of course, it's happened. Yeah. I didn't paint him as that kind of player, to be quite no, honest. That's yeah. Didn't think he was a mercenary. I didn't yeah. think he was, no. Um, but that said, maybe yeah. the other thing is, is that we don't, if they're the only side that have come in for him, mm. and Chelsea have said, "Look, you said we don't want you." Blues would have had him. You know, twenty-five well. million. We're not going to turn that down. If someone, if someone else comes in and says, "All oh, right, we can't. We, we're not going to mm. give him that," but say. He's looking for a midfielder, anyone in the Premier League. So if somebody comes in the Premier League with eighteen million, mm. he may well have turned around and said, "Well, go on." Well, he would yeah, have competition. Ch- then, Chelsea wouldn't have sold him in the Premier League. But yeah, League, well, then, so then La Liga. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I, mean, I know. I've been said that. You know, they, they sold Massa, didn't they? Mm. You know, there's not. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. If, if they don't class them as being necessarily yeah. top, the top of what they need or top, top class. Mm. Then I don't think they've got that big a problem with selling to Premier League. I think that mattered it on a slight side note. I think that matter deal was genius by yeah. Mourinho because Man United had already played them twice, didn't need him, and yeah. he got forty million out of it. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know. yeah, it was a great bit of business. But but going back to Ramirez, you know, I I might be wrong here. Is he is he completely dead in his chances of getting into the Brazil side now? Is 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 the Brazil manager what gonna watch Chinese him? football on Al Jazeera seven? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, you know? Why would you pick him? Uh, well, I suppose 
you wouldn't, would you? The competitive no, what, of what? Yeah, exactly. There's no competitiveness in that league. Christopher. At his level, for his level, you know, there isn't, is mm. there? For somebody of his no. ability, he, there he's, isn't. No, it's not. He's, it's absolutely obviously the travelling involved is, is oh, yeah. incredible. So he's got to get over that if he comes back mm. to Brazil or whatever. So he's, you know, he's literally just written his own gravestone, mm. hasn't he? Like, well, <laughs> when it comes to international football, maybe just there's well, there's two there's two scenarios. Either he's kind of resigned to the fact that he's not going to get to the side, or he doesn't care. Yeah. yeah. It's either one of those two. It was like you said, I'd never really had him down as that sort of player. You did, I, I you didn't even, seen... but then you do. You know, we don't know these players' no, characters, no. do we? We don't see no. them on and off the pitch. I can only presume he's getting paid an absolute oh, fool. I would have thought so, yeah. So, I should think that's a big, big factor. And it's sort of an issue that keeps popping up on today's yeah, we're show, isn't money, it? Money, 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 money. It keeps popping up. And another example there. Do you think we'll see him again in a couple of years back in Europe? I think someone in to Milan, someone maybe. I mean, it, it could just be a... Like a you know a, a sort of semi-retirement, pay go pay out, mm. go there and you know add the next five years before you retire. Or it could be get as much money out of I can mm. out of I can for maybe a season, and then <laughs> get my career back on track somewhere else. It's a big risk to take. If he mm. is doing that. I think it's a massive risk. I mean, if he's going to do that, do it in a couple of years. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's a really big risk to do it there when he's at the peak. of Twenty eight is prime time, isn't it? You you you, knock, you are like as good as you are then. That's as good as you're ever going to be. Yeah, definitely. Twenty eight to twenty seven. I think he's really risking to do it then. Be a bit different as well. Obviously, Jermaine Pennant's gone to Singapore or somewhere, but he's coming to the end, isn't he? But, yeah, of course. You know, yeah, that's completely different. I but, can hundred percent understand. But that. saying that. The MLS has taken off because of these sort of marquee signings. Could, could maybe? Oh well, I can only yeah. imagine that that's the idea mm. behind you know the Chinese Super League, is it whatever mm. it's called? I think that is that they're trying to mimic what's gone on in the MLS. Yeah. Um, and good luck to them. Is you know they've got the money. They they're entitled to do whatever they want, aren't they? It's mm. um, it's just a shame. I think if if good players are leaving decent football clubs for the sake of to go to a pretty weak league. Well, it is a weak league. There's mm. no pretty about it. <laughs> for the sake of money, no. I think it's a shame. It is but a shame. But you know, people got to make money, haven't they? And they, they've got to make their own decisions when it comes to that. Things I can't imagine he was on a, a terrible wage at Chelsea, to be honest. No, no. I, I stack shelves at the supermarket with their rest. We've all got our crosses today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll go to China to play football if if you don't fancy it, mate. Oh yeah. double seven oh nine two eight three. And the rest just gives a ring. That's what I was going to say. Brave. Yeah, I did just want to touch on something before we finish. I, I saw the press conference today at Manchester United. Mm. Louis Van Gaal is not a happy man again. Never. <laughs> yeah. My dad calls him the turkey. He says he looks like a turkey. <laughs> That's so true. Nice. <laughs> um, you know, he gets his side to play football like a bunch of turkeys. Um, <sighs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, well, I'm not sorry. Really. I guess he's a United fan. <laughs> um, it, it, what was what was he saying? He, 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 basically, he was he was he was peeved. He was saying that I'm I had enough of you writing stories about my my demise and me, me qu- offering to quit and me being sacked. He said it's not true. <laughs> And he w- used a couple of words I can't remember. He said it was hurt, hurtful or something, yeah. or, wor- or worried, something along those lines. And he wasn't he wasn't pleased anyway. No. Um, I suppose the message to Louis Van Gaal from the journalist will be get your side to perform and we'll stop writing those stories. Um, There's not what else you can say to that, really. I think, I, uh, with, with the way, so I didn't see that, but with, with how you've described it, the way he sounds like he approached it, I, I think it is a bit of a, um, I think he's wounded. I think if, if he was in a confident is, position... Is it a ploy for sympathy from the fans, though? I think it probably... It yeah, could it well be. be. Because, it, you know, they were quite heavily booed, weren't they, against yeah. Southampton? And it could well be. I mean, maybe it's like, just like, I'm trying my best, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> Leave me alone! Leave me alone. <laughs> Get off my back! I mean, he's, perhaps he is trying his best, but his best clearly isn't good enough, good enough really. I've heard lots of people saying that it's down to the recruitment and all this, that and the other. I, I find it hard to believe that, mm. you know... Bastian Schweinsteiger is a, is a poor signing for the six million they paid for him. Mm. Uh, you know, I think Schneidlin. Everybody was looking at Schneidlin suppo- supposedly, so I don't see why that is particularly a, a bad signing. Again, like Memphis Depay was one of the best young talents out mm. there. It, it, I don't really think that's down to recruitment, is no. it? Surely, I completely agree. I think personally, it has to stop with him. I think he's a good manager. Mm. He's obviously got a great track record, mm. but. Like you say, you look at the players. You got 
um, Schneiderlin, Schweinsteiger, Darmian, who did start off well. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. Marshall, who I started it, off well as well. Exactly when, he, when we first signed him, I thought, God, if he's as good in real life as he's on FIFA 15, <laughs> we, are, we are in the money. <laughs> <laughs> Potential of 91. <laughs> but, Gosh, dang it. but it stops with him because yeah. he's not playing anyone in them mm. real positions. He's playing like Ashley Young <clears> as, a, as a left back. Mm. He's playing. He's not a fullback, is he? He's not at all. And he's yeah. taken some criticism for making mistakes as well, which I think is pretty harsh. That is harsh. He's doing his best. He's mm. not. He's a winger. Yeah, exactly. He's playing Rooney as a number nine when those days are behind him. I'm yeah. not saying he's not a, a good player who can't play at that level, but not a number nine anymore. No, I don't think so. Mm. So I think it has to stop with him. And I personally don't feel he's going to make it to the end of the season. Yeah. I've, I've... The fact that he's still in the job makes me think that he will. Because mm. it, it, I don't see how it can get much worse. I mean, do you know it'd have to be in a situation like Chelsea before they get rid of the manager? I don't. I, I think if we don't make the Champions League again, it, it, he's, he has to go because two years is a long time. He, to he, turn I think he, I think he'll be gone at the end of the season. Personally, yeah. I think they've probably got someone lined up. Perhaps Mourinho. Um, obviously, there's this talk about United meeting. Mm. Uh, Guardiola in Paris or whatever, whatever how much truth there is in that I don't yeah. know because everyone seems to be set on the fact he's gone to City so well, I just I, I want to touch on Van Gaal just quickly um, obviously away from the signings I did a bit of a look at the Valdez treatment as well yeah yeah I mean, is that right to treat someone like that completely outcast them? No number, no f- squad photo, well, no locker, no training with the youth. Certainly not. I mean, is that good management? Is it? No. Like Alfred Hitchcock said, you treat your actors like cattle. Yeah, that, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, if that were for him, fair yeah. enough. But you have to treat your players like mm. they're respectable. Because that, oh, I, mean, that I understand that to a certain degree. But if Fergie had done it, nobody would have banned no. him. That, that feud That's actually true. started at Barcelona, though. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Valdez turned up late for a training session. And he didn't like it, banished him. Two weeks later, he was fired. Valdez went on to be one of the best keepers the world's seen in this decade, maybe. And then, obviously, he's gone this move. Is it a personal thing? I mean, is, is that a good management? If it is, it's petulant. No, yeah. it's not good management. It's not, not is good it? ma- if it's personal, then it's not good management. I mean, no. if, if, but then there is talk that he refused, not refused, but he was unhappy about being asked to play for the reserves. Yeah. I think... You know, David De Gea is in front of you, mate. Get over mm. it. Do you know what I mean? David De Gea is arguably up there being in the top three best keepers in the world yeah. at the moment. Mm. You're not going to get out of him, are you? you no. know, what, what were you expected? What were you, 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 know you, you going to come yeah. straight into the first team? It's not going to happen, is he, it? He might well have done He might have thought, I'm better than this guy. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, maybe, yeah. It's a difficult situation, isn't it? Right, betting tips. I want to do this again. Okay, mate. <laughs> I no, lost le- last like week. I said, I'm leaving this entirely lost, up to you because I've got no idea. I lost today. horrendously last week, yeah. so... Um, goals galore this week. Goals galore. Uh, completely random. Shut my eyes. Scribble, scribble, scribble. <laughs> Six games. Please don't follow the pets. Hayden's clearly mental. Goals galore, though. You can never. Shrewsbury, Sheffield, Rotherham, Charlton, Coventry, Scunthorpe, Accrington, Bristol, Hartlepool, Exeter, Exeter, Plymouth, Wickham. Both teams to score fifty p with Ladbrokes. Can You've I, heard it here first. Can, can I please just point out as well? Can, you, can you not say Bristol? It's Bristol Rovers. Oh, sorry. Oh, God. The gas heads. Is it the gas heads? Gas heads. The gas heads was correct, yeah. Gas heads. Right. You're going to have the City fans berating you otherwise. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Are we done? Is that us done? Romeo, done, mate. We're done. Just like to say a massive thank you for Tom. It's for absolutely coming. I'm my sure pleasure. we'll see him again. Yeah, thanks very much. In the immediate Tom. future. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. The witty banter and the footballing knowledge will never. Oh, you're too kind. Oh. And accurate. <laughs> 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 yeah, nah. good work, mate. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks very much for having me. Um, so, yeah, thanks for listening, and we'll, uh, we'll see, see you next week. week. Cheers. Ciao. Ta ra.